So today we're going to be looking at how to use the technical analysis library in Python. So you can find it here at this GitHub link, which I'll leave in the description. And essentially what it does is it makes calculating all of these indicators very, very easy for us. You don't have to mess around reinventing the wheel, creating yet another formula to calculate the RSI from a pandas data frame. You can do it all in this library. So how do we actually use it? So we'll go ahead and just open up a Python file here. So we'll do vim tutorial.py. And then we'll go ahead and import TA. So that's what the library is called. You're gonna to wanna to install it with pip if you don't have it already. And we'll go ahead and import some other libraries so that we can see it in action. So I'm gonna import pandas as pd. I'm going to import matplotlib so that we can actually plot some of these indicators and you can see them working. And I'm gonna import yfinance as well in order to get some financial data that we can do some analysis on. So we'll start off just by grabbing some data. So we'll say data frame is equal to yf.ticker BTC USD. So we'll grab Bitcoin USD data for the past sort of four years or however long Yahoo Finance has the data for. Then we'll dot reset index. And then we'll grab the date and the close column. I kind of rushed through that there because this is not the point of the tutorial. We're mostly focusing on the TA library. If you want to know how to use Y Finance, I've probably got another tutorial for that or you can find one somewhere else. So in terms of the Y Finance tutorial, let's go ahead and go to the documentation and pick out one that we like. So I'm gonna go to Momentum Indicators and I'm just gonna try and grab the RSI. There are lots of fancy ones here, but I'm just gonna get the simple RSI indicator, which is what I want. So we can see here, ta.momentum.rsi indicator. And it takes a series, a panda series for the close. It takes a window as an int and fill any true or false. Okay, so let's go ahead and just copy this and say, df rsi so we'll make a new column in our data frame called rsi we'll set that equal to that thing that we just copy pasted and then all we need to do is provide the close and the window so i'm going to say df close is just our closing values at the end of each day for bitcoin usd and then the window i'm going to set to 14 so we've got the, the 14 day rsi here and so what this will actually do, so this bit here that I've got highlighted, so um, this bit here, what this section will do is it will create an object of this class, so of this type. It won't actually give you the RSI. You have to use the RSI method in order to actually retrieve the number itself. It might seem a little bit of a strange way of doing it, especially since this particular class only has one function and one series that it can return. But it makes sense when we'll look at Bollinger Bands later on when they have lots of different kinds of series that it can return. It, it makes more sense to look at these things as classes and then create objects and then call the methods on that in order to retrieve the actual data. So if you were to go ahead and print this out here, which I might well do, if I do something like that, and then, yeah, I'll just, we'll do something like this, and we'll go ahead and print it out so that I can show you what's actually happening. Python 3 tutorial. So we can see that this is just a Python object at this memory address. We don't actually have the RSI data. To retrieve that from the object, all you have to do is call the dot RSI function on the end there. 
And there we go, this is an actual series which we can use. So I'll go ahead and make that the way I was going to make it, where we just have it as an extra column in our data frame here. And then let's go ahead and plot that. So we'll do plt dot plot and say df date and we'll plot the closing price of Bitcoin or rather the RSI here for the daily closes. And we'll see what that looks like. I'm going to do a plt dot show at the end here so that we can actually look at it. There we go. So just like a standard RSI chart, basically, especially on such a small time frame. We've got lots of these spikes. You can see the 2020 crash here. The RSI went down to like 15, which is very low, especially on this time frame. Okay. So that was how to use the RSI indicator. So going back to what we did, we went to the documentation. We found the class that we wanted. So we want RSI indicator. We looked at what parameters it takes. We saw that we needed to provide a series and you could optionally provide the window. It has the default of 14, but we wanted to set it explicitly so that we know what we're talking about. And then to retrieve the data from the class, once you've instantiated it, you just called dot RSI. So let's go ahead and do this again with something maybe a little more complicated. So if I just comment these out and then let's do the thing with the Bollinger Bands. So it's a volatility indicator, Bollinger Bands. So let's create one of these. And we can see that this takes the closing price, it takes a window, it takes a window deviation, which is like how many standard deviations should the Bollinger Bands be from the midpoint and then fill NA. It's false, so does it fill nulls basically? So let's go ahead and make this one. So we'll do ball, we'll do ball is equal to ta.volatility.bollinger bands. We'll provide the closing price data. We'll give it the window just to be explicit. We'll not bother with the window deviation, although you can mess around with that if you'd like. And then what makes this more interesting is that there are many more methods that we can call from this object. So we can call a H band and that will give us the top of the band. We can call L band and that will give us the bottom of the band. And you know, there are lots of others, these like indicators, which will tell you when the close is lower than the band, maybe you're making some kind of trading bot and you want a signal that would be quite useful. But in our case, we're just going to get the H band and the L band, and we're going to make them as new columns within our data frame. So we'll do L band is equal to, it's going to be ball dots this. So we'll do ball dot that. That should give us everything. If we just copy and paste that, let me do like H band. There we go. And now we should be in a position to actually plot some stuff. So we'll do plt dot plot and we'll do we'll plot the closing price of Bitcoin versus the date. So we'll do df, df close. And then we'll plot the top and bottom Bollinger bands. So we'll do L band and H band. I'm going to set the color on these, otherwise there'll be different colors and it will look dreadful. So we'll do like orange, doesn't really matter too much. And then we'll do a plt .show. Perfect. So we've got our Bollinger Bands here. Difficult to see on the linear scale unless you zoom in, but Bollinger Bands are more of a, like a shorter term indicator. So we can see here, we've got our top and bottom Bollinger Band and the price of Bitcoin here just varying within it. You could, of course, combine this with a previous tutorial I did and 
plot this in Plotly with the candlesticks behind it, but I'm just using Matplotlib here for simplicity. And just to finish this chart off, let's go ahead and like, fill in the area between the Bollinger Bands like you would normally see. So we'll do a plte.fill underscore between. Provide the range of dates that we want. So just in our case, all of them. Provide the lower band. Or it, might, it doesn't actually matter, but the, uh, the bands that we want to fill between, basically. So H band. We'll set alpha, so the transparency, we'll set it equal to 0.2-ish, and then we also need to set the color to orange, otherwise it will be a different color and it will look bad. There you go, so nice, normal Bollinger Bands that you would expect to see. Let's go ahead and do one more example to make sure that we're really getting how to use this library to calculate any technical indicator that we might want. So I'm gonna to go to other indicators. I'm gonna to go to daily log return, which is an interesting indicator. And again, it just takes the close and an optional fill NA, which we're not gonna fill in. So we'll go ahead and comment out our previous code here. And then go down here and was a df dlr is equal to this df close, which was our parameter that we needed to provide. And then we need to grab the method name from the documentation. So daily log return. And that should do it. And then we'll just plot this straight up in my plot lib. There we go. This is a nice indicator that can provide a few different insights. Like one of them is the decreasing volatility here as we go further into the bear markets. And then this is sort of like minimum volatility because no one cares about Bitcoin. And then as we get further into the main cycle, the mania phase, we see volatility increasing, decreasing, and we go through these periods, which can be quite cool to look at. Maybe there are some other things you can do with the daily log returns. But yeah, I hope you understand now how to use the TA library to calculate any technical indicator that you might want.